For this video, we are going to manually dimension this part, fully define all features, and apply the contour rule, along with introduce some new features such as counterboard and countersunk holes. So, you'll notice on this part, we are already given our two views. We do not need a top view because the top view will not give us any extra information that we cannot get from the right or the front view. So to begin, I'm going to start by dimensioning the overall block dimension. Then I'm going to step in the layer and dimension all these details. Then I'm going to do the whole locations and the whole callouts. So I'm going to apply the contour rule, which states that we place the dimension where we can see the feature best. Um, also part of that rule is placing the dimensions between the views as much as possible. Uh, really the key here, or the goal is to make sure the drawing looks neat when it is completed. So I'm gonna start with a 1.75 inch measurement for the height. You'll notice the scale is a two to one. So if I were to measure it, it should measure three and a half inches, which is double that 1.75. Um, so I'm going to place the height right here. I'm going to pull it off quite a bit. Um, I'm going to use an extension line off of the bottom here. Remember, extension lines do not touch the physical part. And I'm going to pull it off to three off of the top and the bottom here. So those are my extension lines, and I'm gonna place my dimension line right here. I'll leave a gap for the actual dimension. I'll place my arrowheads on here. And for neatness, I'm gonna erase some of this, make it look a little more equal. And I'll place my 1.75 dimension. So I left it out so I have room in here for more dimensions. I'm gonna have to place two more dimensions in here, uh, both of them locating these holes, but that's later. So I got my height. I'm gonna do my overall width now, which will be up here. I'm going to take my extension line off the top of the part here. So I got my extension line, toss my dimension line between them leaving a break for my dimension. So because I am using a ruler and this class is not focused on reading a ruler, I'm gonna to stick to two decimal places, make life simple. So now I need a, got my height, got my width, need my depth, which will be over here. I'll pull it off of the part here and here. So far, there's been no new dimension types. They were linear, and they've all been inside of the brackets here. So this was 0 0.50. So those are my overall block dimensions done. Next, I can step in a layer and focus on these details here. So the contour rule says, dimension the part where you can see the feature best. So right here, I can see this feature over here, but I can't tell what it is. <clears throat> over here, I can see it actually sticks out. So I'm gonna place a dimension for it over here. Same with this cutout right here. Over here, I can't tell. This could be coming out at me <clears throat> or going in. Over here, I can clearly tell it's going in. So dimension goes on the right view for those. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll dimension from the very bottom to right here for this cutout. Then I'll dimension from here to here. And then I can either place a dimension from here to here or here to the top, but not both. I cannot have dimensions adding up to that because they will conflict. That's over dimensioning. So I'm gonna do these dimensions down here first. I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna come out here. Make sure your extension lines don't touch each other. So here they're close, so I might erase that 
later, but they should not touch. Um, and then still not touching on the part there. So I'll come out here also. So those are my extension lines. Next I'm going to do my dimension. So because this is kind of tight right here, I'm going to place my arrows on the outside and place a dimension inside. And then for this one, I'll have enough room to do it normally. Then, so now I can either dimension this gap or this one. Um, I'll go do the big one. So I'll pull it off right here. This way we get to see crossing extension lines in a moment. And I'll pull it off down here. Place my dimension line. Remember not to touch those extension lines. And I forgot to leave a break. And your point seven five. So that's all the details. If I were to place a dimension right here, it would over define this drawing. So those are all the Y's over here. Next I'm gonna do the X's. So I need two X values. I need a distance for this feature down here and a distance for this feature up here. Uh, we cannot dimension hidden lines, so we're ignoring these hidden lines right now. We'll deal with those later. So I'm going to place this dimension down here. Um, again, because it is tight, I'm going to place the dimension lines on the outside and point towards the dimension, which is 0.25. So next is this one. There is no easy way to get to it. We're gonna have to go up the part somewhere. So I'm gonna go across the part to the top here because there's less going on compared to down here. So I'll take my extension line off of it and it cuts across the part all the way to the top. Make sure it doesn't touch there. And then extension line right here. And now this one is tighter than those ones, so I can't physically fit the value inside. So what I can do is pull it out. I can still fit arrowheads inside. And then I'll place the dimension right here, which is 0.15. So that fully defines all the details, I believe. Next up are holes. So now we're going to do the hole locations, hole callouts, and then the chamfer. First thing we need to do is we're going to dimension these holes to each other and then to a wall to locate them. Then I need one dimension on the y axis because the center lines tell me they're aligned, so I just need one. Um, and then do the same two dimensions for this hole. So I'll come from the wall, then from the top, and then my callouts. So the contour rule says place dimensions where you can see the feature. We cannot dimension the hidden lines or center lines. So down here, this is all useless to us for dimensioning purposes. Um, we could measure it with a ruler to get the actual value, but we can't place a dimension there. So all those dimensions come over here. And the contour rule is also what's telling us to put the dimensions inside of each other. So that's why I pulled this dimension up. That's why I pulled that dimension out so I could stack them. So the largest one is on top, and then it gets smaller and smaller as it comes inside. So you're one inch, and then it's 0.5 inch to the side here. Point 
five zero. Then I need my y dimension right here. So I'm going to come off just a little bit. I'm going to keep it close to the part. Because that gives me room right here for this hole. So I'll go ahead and do that one now. Because I got my x's, my y. Now I'm going to do my y, and then this is. Remember, the extension line does not touch the part. There's always a gap there. But the dimension line does touch whatever it's pointing to. Your 1.25. So from there, I need my x dimension right here. I'm going to pull it off of this wall over here because that's where these dimensions are pulled from. And you notice all these holes are located off of the top surface here. So really I have this face and this face are where I'm pulling dimensions from. I'm trying to be as consistent as possible with it. Uh, later on we'll talk about datum dimensioning, but that is what is happening right now. I'm trying to go off of common datums. So this dimension is centered, so it's one inch. So that locates all my holes. Next up will be the actual hole callout. So we have a counterboard hole and counter sunk hole. You notice over here, there's a big portion of the hole and then a little hole that goes through. And over here, there's an angle. So this is called a counter bore. It's for a shoulder bolt or some bolt to sit in and it sits recessed in. This is a counter sunk hole for a counter sunk screw. So the screw sits in flush here. Um, and our hole call out for it tells us all the information we need to manufacture those holes. So we're gonna start with our dimension line Put my ruler on the center there, and it comes off of the outside diameter. Place my arrowhead, then my straight section. And for this call out, it is going to be, I have two holes, so I'm going to go ahead and write 2x diameter 0.25. So that diameter is this inside one. It's the small diameter, the one that would go all the way through. Um, I could write through right here as an option. Uh, so that's the small diameter there. Next, I'm going to write counterboard, but we don't write it out. We have symbols, so that's a counterboard symbol. It's like a square U. We're going to say counterboard to a diameter of this outside diameter here which is 0.45. And then we need a depth, so how deep is that? So I can measure that over here and I place that information right here using a depth symbol. It's like capital T with an arrow. And then the actual depth, which is 0.28. So that is how you do a counterboard call out. Small hole, counterboard to large hole, and then a depth. <clears throat> Down here for the counter sunk hole, we have our same dimension line coming from the center, pointing towards the center, coming off the outside here. With our straight line. And we're going to say diameter of 0.13. So that's the small diameter, again, the one that goes all the way through. Then we say countersunk, which is like a spread out V to a diameter of 0.25, which is this top diameter here, that outside circle. And then we write by 82 degrees. So that 82 degrees is from the center line to the outside right here. So that is the countersunk callout. Uh, 
everything is fully defined except for this cut, this notch right here. So for purposes of this video, I'm going to add another notch right here. We're going to pretend it's symmetrical in 45 degrees. So for a chamfer call out is what we're going to do is the leader points straight at the center of the chamfer and it goes straight. And then we're going to write 2x. This will kind of go into the isometric view, but that's okay. 0 0.05. So that 0 0.05 measurement is an x or the y callout for this feature. So it's that one or that one. And we write by and 45 degrees. So standard chamfer call out be 45 degrees. Um, angles will be provided to you in the notes of a drawing. Uh, engineering drawings typically have notes, so it'll be all capitals. And it'll say notes, and this is where you'll typically find information for post processing or chemical processing or paint, chem film. Um, maybe standards, uh, critical features, maybe some generic chamfer callouts or edge breaks. Um, for your homework, the notes are how we will be giving you instructions for the assignment. Um, what's next? Uh, for an angle dimension, just for an example. So this is a completed drawing now, it's fully defined. Uh, if you want to see how to do an angle dimension, so let's, let's say I want to dimension this angle right here. I'll take an extension line off of it like that, and then I'll use this one, come up here, and then I'd write an arc for my dimension line, and I would place the angle here, 45 degrees. So that's an example of how you would do an angle. Um, if you have a hole, that did not go all the way through the part here. It would be a normal hole call out like that. And then you'd have a depth symbol and you'd have the depth of that hole there. Um, all that's left for this is to fill out my title block. So material, I have no idea. This is just a drafting practice. So I'm gonna write an A again, drawn by, write my name, all capital letters. Put the date, vision A. And that is a completed drawing.